All right, hi everyone. This is Grammar Lecture 3 for this week. And this week in the lecture, we're talking about when we will use A, the indefinite article A, versus when we will use an, the indefinite article an. Uh, we'll talk about what indefinite articles actually are. And you probably think that this is fairly intuitive. You've been using A and an in writing for a long time. But there are some situations grammatically uh, where deciding whether we use a or an is pretty tricky. And so we'll, we'll walk through all of those together. So indefinite articles, a and an, we use these when we refer to an unspecified thing or an unspecified quantity. So we use these in writing when we either don't know or don't care which specific thing we're talking about. Maybe we could be more specific, we choose not to be, um, maybe we have have no idea about the specifics of an item or a thing or quantity. And so we have to use the indefinite articles a or an. So an example sentence, there once was a sheep. So we're not giving any sort of additional context in the sentence about it. We don't know its name, where it comes from, anything about it. Um, so we can't say the sheep. We're not specifying a single one. Uh, we are specifying that there, there was a sheep and that's it, no more specific information. That would call for the use of an indefinite article. So you know this from writing. We use a before nouns or adjectives that begin with a consonant, and everybody knows what consonants are. Um, X, M, P, Q, T, N, D, B, um, letters that aren't vowels. We also will use a when vowels imitate consonant sounds. So in the instance of you making a Y sound, like in the example below, a university, um, it's imitating a consonant sound. And so we will use a instead of an. We wouldn't say an university. Um, it's almost hard to say that, an university. Um, another case of using a instead of an will be when the vowel O makes a W sound. So there's another instance of a vowel imitating a consonant. Um, the final example in this short list here, a one-eyed pirate, okay? So we have an O, which we think is a vowel, so we automatically think as writers, oh, this is going to be an AN situation instead of an A situation. So but we, we sound it out and we realize that that vowel isn't really making a vowel sound, a one, wuh, wuh. So that's the sound that it's making. It's imitating a consonant. So when we have consonant sounds or vowels that imitate consonants, we know that we use a instead of an. The rest in the list are fairly intuitive. A cat, we wouldn't say an cat, we'd say a cat, a dog, um, a young puppy. So these are all examples of when we use a before nouns and adjectives instead of an. Okay, we use an before words that begin with a vowel sound or a soft h sound. Um, and this again comes from sort of pronunciation. We, if we find it really difficult to just put a instead of in front of words that have that soft H sound. So the examples here, we have an egg. It would be hard, we kind of trip over uh, when we say a uh, egg. <laughs> it's hard for us to get that out. So that an creates more definition linguistically between the um, indefinite article and the noun or adjective that we're describing. So an egg, um, an hourglass. So there's that soft H. So notice that this is, the soft H is applying to things like our, honor, um, words that have that nice soft H sound. It's not talking about heat, heather, high, ha. Um, those words have that more sort of fricative ha huh, huh, sound. Um, and we're not talking about those. Those would be instances where we use A. But that soft H sound, um, it, it's almost, it's imitating um, 
a vowel because it makes that ah sound. It's, it's more of a vowel sound than it is a consonant. Uh, the third example, an antique necklace. Um, so we have that vowel sound from antique, ah, ah. So because we have these sounds, we really need that extra letter, that N sound, to create definition between these words. Um, because we can see easily how in speaking and in writing, how having these words really close to one another without the definition of that N um, creates some trouble, that we might lump them together, that we're going to trip over them if we're speaking, um, especially if we're speaking quickly. So this is a good rationale for linguistically why we need uh, two indefinite articles, A and AN. Okay, here's where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. So sound rules for these indefinite articles, A and AND, we also apply them to acronyms. Um, and we'll be surprised at how many letters when we say the letter as part of an acronym actually makes a vowel sound, even if the letter itself is a consonant. So here are two examples to sort of demonstrate what I'm talking about. The first sentence, a Society of Writers member was quoted in the article. Okay, so because A comes before society and it has that consonant sound, we know that we use A society. But when we repeat the same sentence using an acronym, an SOW member was quoted in the article. Now, saying the letter S makes it sound like it's starting with a vowel. So before we get to the S part of the letter S, we get this E. Eh, Eh, this vowel sound of s uh, and so now we have to use an in front of it um, and and that's not super intuitive when we get to using acronyms um, and you'll find that pretty commonly when we pronounce letters they often have vowel sounds and so in places where if we were saying the actual word we may use a but when we're pronouncing it as part of an acronym and saying the actual letter, then we switch to the other indefinite article, and. So let's do some practice here. Um, blank age would be an, an age. We have that vowel sound there. Here's an acronym one, blank M and M. It's an M&M. &M. So remember that S sound for society of writers on the last side, last slide. Now we're saying M. And before we get to the M mm sound, when we're pronouncing the letter, we make a vowel sound first. M. And ours, the next one, that soft vowel sound, ow, our. Blank coat. A coat, blank egg, an egg, blank golf tee, a golf tee, blank union, a union, and that's because union is making that Y sound. We have a vowel imitating a consonant. Finally, a little bit more practice, blank elephant. An elephant, blank house, a house. Now you'll recall that this is not a soft H. So this is not the same kind of um, H sound as our would make, where it makes that vowel sound. This does make a real consonant sound. So we use a blank LRS report. And that's an. So the pronunciation of the letter L makes a vowel sound, L. So we have that, um, that vowel sound before we get to the O part of the letter, and that will indicate the use of an. Blank honor. An honor. Blank US ambassador. A, U.S. ambassador. Mm -hmm. And the final one, blank RTA, road traffic accident. 
and that is an, because before we get to the er part of pronouncing the letter r, we get the ah, r, r. So we get a vowel sound before we get the consonant sound as we're pronouncing the letter. So we use an, r, t, a. Okay, so overall, that's what the quiz will cover. The quiz will focus more on the, um, the trickier applications of using a versus and. So don't expect a lot of slow pitch um, cat, dog, things that make it quite easy to determine whether you use a or an. But as always, if you have questions, just shoot me an email. I hope everyone has a great week.